Hi everybody, so I hope you're doing well. Um, for this week's devotional I want to um, bring you a few thoughts from Isaiah 43, um, which is a passage of scripture that has been um, really living with me over the last few weeks and months. I think it probably started back last autumn when we had our 24-7 week of prayer and I think somebody had written a section of Isaiah 43 up on the chalkboard and it really gripped me then and it's kind of lived with me ever since really. Um, and I guess the key verse that uh, I just want to highlight is verse 19, which might be familiar to you because we've heard it one or two times recently. And God says this uh, through the prophet to his people. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And many of us um, will be familiar with uh, the prophetic word that came last year to our family of churches, Regions Beyond, which uh, talked about God bringing us into a new era where things would be completely different from how they've been before. And uh, suddenly, of course, in, in politics and everywhere, we're hearing about um, things that are unprecedented. That's the word that's being used all the time at the moment. Um, and even in government, I notice that people keep talking about the new era. So even at the weekend, uh, Sir Keir Starmer, as he was made leader of the Labour Party, talked about us coming into a new era. And I guess that's not a surprise in some ways, because often we say, don't we, that what is happening in the natural God is also doing in the spiritual. But the thing that um, has really struck me as I've read this recently is this question that God asks in terms of the new thing that he's doing. He says to his people, do you not perceive it? which I guess implies that it's possible to not see what he's doing. It's possible to miss the new thing that God is doing. And so really what uh, the question I want to put to us um, today is really what, what is it that will ensure that we don't miss this new thing that God is doing, that uh, we take note and we're ready to do all that, um, to partake in all that God wants to do in and through us in these days. Um, so let's just read a few verses from Isaiah 43 and then I'll um, bring a couple of thoughts. So from the beginning, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honoured and I love you. I give men in return for you, people in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. And uh, we could go on, but I just encourage you to read the rest of chapter 43 and then on into the beginning of chapter 44. And really, as the prophets often do, I guess, there's um, I think that Isaiah has a huge amount of encouragement for us, but also a provocation. And I think the combination of those two things will help us to ensure that we don't miss what God is doing um, in us and through us, what he wants to do with us in these days. So first of all, by way of encouragement, there is so much in here. And I just think it's key for us at the moment that um, that we speak these truths that we read in Isaiah into our own souls, that like David, we kind of talk to ourselves and speak the truth of God into ourselves. I know that I need to do that in these days. Um, let me just give you three things. There's many more, uh, but they each begin with um, the Lord and who he is. And I think we just need to be founded on who God is um, and what he's done in our lives in these days. So the first one is this um, in verse one, the, is, he's the Lord who created us, who formed us. And so uh, we know, don't we, that even before we were born, even before the creation of the world, he had chosen us, he'd set his favour upon us. Um, and destined us for being recipients of his mercy and his grace. And we're precious, um, Isaiah says, we're precious in his eyes, we're honoured, he loves us. Um, he's called us and created us for his glory. The second thing is this, that he's the Lord who is our redeemer, who made a way through the sea. And this reminds us of the Exodus that we've been referring to in our last preaching series, uh, where God miraculously made a way through the Red Sea so that the Israelites could be um, rescued from slavery 
in Egypt. And as we come up to Easter, we uh, need to speak to ourselves that reassurance, don't we, that, um, that we've been rescued from slavery to sin. Verse 25 says this, God speaking again, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sin, he says. And then the third thing um, that we see is that he's the Lord who formed us from the womb and will help us. How is he going to help us? Well, he's going to pour out his spirit on us. Um, This is uh, now over into chapter 44 and verse 2. He says, uh, he describes uh, the people of God in this way. They shall spring up among the grass like willows by flowing streams. So God is going to, he promises to pour out his spirit, to be our sustenance, to be our strength, to be our counsellor and our comforter, to fill us with the very presence of God that we are sustained and enabled and that we have all that we need in these times. And so there's so much encouragement from the Lord. Um, and I think that that's one of the keys to us ensuring um that we don't miss what God wants to do amongst us is that we are absolutely firmly founded on on who God says he is and what he's done in our lives. And then the other side of it is the provocation that the prophet brings. And in fact, straight after the announcement that he was going to do something new amongst his people, he says this in verse 22. Yet you did not call upon me, O Jacob, but you have been weary of me, Israel. And so there's this sudden stark uh, accusation to the people of God that actually they've kind of got used to the things of God. They've kind of got a bit bored with um, with who they are as God's people and going through the routine of of what it means to be the people of God. So they don't bother calling on him anymore. They don't bother seeking him. And I, I don't know about you, but I just find that a really scary thought that Uh, we might have got to the point or there might be elements of our lives where actually we've got a bit familiar with the things of God. We've got familiar with our salvation that actually we don't seek after God like uh, he's the foundation and the rock beneath our feet. And it's easy to point the finger at the Israelites, isn't it? And kind of, um, you know, accuse them of, of so quickly forgetting who God was and what he's done in their lives. But actually, we need to put the mirror back on ourselves. And I think really ask ourselves the question in these days, am I seeking the Lord? Uh, um, Have I got a bit weary with the things of God? Uh, Is there a sense in which somehow I've got bored and I'm just going through the motions of um, the things that I say I believe about who God is and what he's done in me? And so I don't know about you, but I find that a massive challenge and provocation, um, actually, that we need to be stirred and we need to stir ourselves to seek his face in these days. And that is one of the keys that will mean that we actually perceive this thing that God is, this new thing that God is doing and that we don't miss it. Um, I picked up an old book the other day. Um, and I'm not sure I've actually read it all the way through, but it's um, by A.W. Tozer. And um, I don't know if you've read anything by Tozer, but he's so great. Um, so gr- such great truth to go back to and such amazing encouragement, a great prophet of the 20th century. Um, and the book I picked up, picked up was Out of the Rut into Revival. And I just read, want to read you a, a bit from it that it, it kind of talks about us look, examining our own hearts and seeing if we've got into a rut with the things of God. So God says, why don't you call upon me? I'm here and I'm ready to help you. I will do these things for you. Now, the voice of unbelief says things will be as they are. There's no use. But the voice of Jehovah says, I will do a new thing. I will make a way in the wilderness. I will make rivers in the desert. Unbelief, of course, is entirely logical and true to nature. The sun rises and the sun sets. It rains and it snows. Seasons follow each other. The ducks fly to the north and then to the south. Babies are born and old men die. Things go on as they go on. But the voice of Jehovah into that says, behold, I will. When you introduce God, a new thing happens. I will make a way in the wilderness. Whoever heard of that? I will make rivers in the desert. Whoever heard of that? God does not say this is new to him. Nothing is new to God. It's just new to us. When God says to us, I will do a new thing, what is it? Is God going to create something brand new as though he were creating a galaxy out of nothing? No, he's going to repeat for a new generation what he did for an old generation. He says, I will do it for you. 
God invites us to see him work. How are we going to respond to this new thing that God is doing? Well, it will be different for each of us, but I believe that we need to be so founded in the encouragements that we find, well, all through scripture, but these ones that we find in Isaiah 43. Um, but then we need to examine our hearts and we need to ask ourselves, have we got into a rut? Are we really seeking after God? And we need to, um, I believe, stir ourselves again to seek after him in these days. Let me just pray as I finish. Father, I just want to thank you for the provocation and the encouragement from Isaiah. Thank you that, Lord, indeed you say to us you're doing a new thing. Lord, we don't want to be the p- people who miss it. Uh, Father, I pray that we'll be so clearly founded and established on your truths in our lives and we'll be speaking them to ourselves. But also I pray that, Lord, you provoke us and we'd examine our hearts and we'd see if we've got into a rut. And Lord, we would go after you again these days and truly seek your face, set aside time to find you, to be with you, to listen to you, Lord, and to see what you would have us do. Amen. Amen.